Hi there all and uh, welcome to this simulation and aviation production. My name is Tom. I'm actually running the YouTube channel Simulation and Aviation and uh, also our Facebook page Simulation and Aviation. You're more than welcome to uh, join in and uh, give us your uh, aviation thoughts and uh, share your aviation stuff with us. Um, I'm actually a real-world Airbus pilot, but I'm also a hardcore flight sim enthusiast. I've been flying the flight simulators for many, many years, actually. My first one was for the Commodore 64, and uh, yeah, <laughs> how many of you actually knows the Commodore 64? Well, um, at that time it was loaded by tape, I remember, and I remember also that it took exactly 12 and a half minutes to load the simulator at that time. Well, um, now I have installed the Prepare 3D, among other, here on my uh, computer, um, and uh, I thought it could be fun to show you a flight from A to B. I chose San Francisco to Reno, actually from the very first step that you take into the aircraft and until you have shut it down at your destination. Um, the only add-on program I'm going to use is the Aerosoft uh, Airbus add-on. And actually, um, uh, all of the stuff you'll be seeing here is more or less similar, actually, for the uh, flight simulator, uh, the FSX, the Microsoft uh, flight simulator. So, um, the place where I want to begin is actually to run through some uh, cool stuff here with the Aerosoft Airbus. It's actually a really, really nice uh, add-on for the uh, flight simulator. Now, if we uh, start to look, we are actually uh, parked here at gate A1, gate A1 in uh, San Francisco. There is a lot of nice uh, traffic going on here. Um, I chose an American Airlines uh, Airbus 319 with, uh, for this flight. But just to show you, if we go up on the vehicles and select vehicle, you can see there are different kind of uh, airbuses we can uh, choose from. I actually uh, chose the uh, CFM solution, engine solution for the American Airlines uh, aircraft. Good, um, let's just jump down to the uh, plane as well. And uh, for the Aerosoft uh, add-on there is a very smart way to jump around in the airplane and the cockpits. If we click on the arrow up here to the left you can see different uh, solutions. If we click on the first one we'll go directly into the uh, captain's seat. And if you take your joystick and on the top of the joystick you should toggle button you can actually navigate around the cockpit here like this and again click on the other views and you'll be able to see the different panels and positions this is actually a very uh, nice position to use here you have a very good uh, view of the uh, ECAMs and also your MCDUs and your navigation displays um, if we take a little bit further, here is a close-up of the uh, MCDU. And here you can see both the MCDUs actually. Now, the Aerosoft uh, flight simulator is actually, or the Aerosoft add-on, uh, has got a very cool thing actually. So if we click on the MCDU number 2 window here, you'll be able to see that uh, you can do different stuff here. You can pre-select different stuff. Uh, first of all, if we take the aircraft state, this actually sets up the cockpit exactly to the state of flight which you want. Now you can load the cold dark state, turnaround state, which is the state we are in right now. You can also load the taxi state, takeoff state, or you can define your own user state as well. Now let's try and jump into the cold dark stage. Click on it here. Boink. 
like this. And then we can jump up here to one of the other windows and you can see everything just goes totally dark. And then if you go up to the uh, overhead panel you can see the external power switch. We do have external power available and if we jump outside the aircraft you can see the uh, the uh, ground power unit uh, right here next to the aircraft. Let's just jump in again to the overhead panel and we can click on the external power and now we have powered up the aircraft. And then basically we start uh, from scratch by setting everything up here in the uh, cockpit. Um, the system also has got a co-pilot built in so he can actually help you by going through the checklist and also to set up the different uh, things that you ask him to do. Now let's go into the checklist here by clicking the checklist button and we select checklist on and we also want the co-pilot here to help us out. There we go. Now this can be very helpful if you're not that familiar with the uh, Airbus cockpit. Then it says start checklist or use key number one. So I click on the key number one and then we can just... Cockpit preparation checklist. checklist. Batteries. Set on. Electrical power. External power is on. Navigation lights. On. Engine master. Both off. Engine mode selector. Checked normal. Landing gear lever. Checked. Parking brake. Off. Flaps. Checked position. Speed brake lever. Checked retracted. Thrust levers. Idle. Transponder mode. Checked standby. Radio control panel. Set on. E can recall. Checked. Anti-skid. On. Flight director. On. Emergency lights. Set. No smoking signs. Set on. Anti-ice. Off. Probe window heat. Auto. Air condition. Checked. Ventilation panel. Is checked. Electric panel. Checked. Fuel pumps. Set on. Hydraulics. Is checked. Accubrake pressure. Set. Ground proximity warning system. On. Electronic flight control system. On. Adheres. Set to nav. Emergency equipment. Is checked. Checklist complete. So, now we actually uh, made the checklist for the uh, preparation first part of the uh, setup here. If we go to the second MCDU again, we can then, you know, start the other checklist if we want to do that. Uh, first of all, I just need to show you another couple of things here with the MCDU number two. Up here you have aircraft doors. You can actually from here manual close and open the different doors in the, uh, in the aircraft. Uh, ground services in here, traffic cones around the aircraft, wheel chucks, external power, ground proximity, uh, uh, sorry, uh, a ground power unit, or uh, external power disconnected or connected. So a lot of different nice things and options, checklist view, um, you can you know, play around with it, and actually, it's it's worth having a look at. It's a, a brilliant setup, actually. I love this setup. Um, load fuel. 
Now you can put in manual numbers here and actually uh, you can load it instantly or you can uh, you know start the boarding and it you will use real time boarding and loading of the uh, aircraft but uh, we can also go down here and just push the init load sheet and then it will you know just uh, uh, make a random selection uh, we put in 61 packs uh, 1.5 tons of cargo and it actually put in 8.4 tons of fuel which I know for this flight we are going to do to Reno is uh, uh, more than enough so right now the weight of the aircraft 54.24 tons and it also calculated the uh, CG now we can start boarding we can load cargo and we can also load the fuel as well great stuff Next step for us will be to go over here under the scenario and actually go under the flight planner and now we want to build the flight from KSFO and again as I said I already parked the aircraft at the position A1 which is a small gate click OK destination Reno K R N O in Nevada. There we go. It's going to be an under the instrument flight rules. We can choose low altitude airways, and we can just click here find rules. Okay, a rather low uh, cruising altitude, but we'll be okay with that for 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 this flight. But it did find a. Uh, a route for us. Uh, have a look here at the uh, navigation lock. You can recall that at any time at the, at the front page as well. Uh, in the cockpit, I mean. And here you can see we go from San Francisco to Oakland direct, then the Point, point uh, Collie, and it takes Airway Whiskey 6 all the way down to Sierra Whiskey Romeo, and then Whiskey 494 to head tree and then into a Reno and as you can see it is a very very short flight 23 minutes is that the minutes no it's not around 20 minutes for this flight I click OK again and again um, I'll suggest you to save this flight so you can uh, use it another time as well so KSFO to Reno flight 1000 there we go description Oops. Uh, KSFO to Reno airport and OK then I click OK and yeah, it's, uh, it asks us now if we want to uh, move the aircraft to the parts or airport listed on the flight plan. We already are in the right uh, spot so I just click no. There we go. Now you can see that uh, our navigation systems are aligning here and just to make sure that uh, we are aligning the uh, the IRS is here in the right place. We go up under a line IRS. We put in KSFO to KRNO in the MCDU. And we just want to align them. There we go. So, uh, when you set up the MCDU, it's actually very important that you, uh, uh, that you have a, a standard flow every time uh, when you set it up. For example, if you start here by the aircraft status, uh, you get that by hitting the data button and then aircraft status just check it's the correct database <coughs> correct engines then we go to the init page and we are flying from San Francisco to Reno and we are flight uh, I think it's called US isn't it? just call it US 1000 there we go 1000 like this and uh, we can use cost index 20. We are filed at flight level 15 
zero. So, and we put that into the system here. So, then we go to the flight plan and we want to enter the um, the uh, uh, points and the route that we have uh, planned early on. So we go up under the scenario and then we choose the navigation lock. There we go. And then we can enter. Now, first of all, we need to find out which runway we are going to use for the departure. Now, there is a, a, a little tricky thing. That means we need to activate the ATC. So I go up under the views, go under air traffic control, click on that. And now you get an ATC menu over here to the right. So first of all, we need to listen in on San Francisco 80s. So click on button number two. San Francisco airport information x-ray 1417 Zulu. Wind calm, visibility greater than 20 miles. Sky condition clear, temperature 15.25, altimeter 2992, ILS, runway 28 right in, ILS, runway 28 left. And you can see that the two, uh, sorry, two runways they're using today are the uh, 28 right and 28 left. So we can expect uh, probably 28 left for the departure. Good. When I'm done writing down the important information, such as the altimeter 2992 um, and the uh, sorry the runway in use, I can tune the clearance delivery. Here. I click on one, and uh, now I can actually request the IFR clearance. It's very important that you are ready to write down your clearance here now, so you so you know what uh, to set up. Now there is another guy here, Orbit 6465 on the frequency. Let's wait until he is done and then request our IFR clearance. Wow, there is a lot of traffic here today. Let's try and jump in here now. Okay, it's quite busy today. That's typically also in the real world. We many, many times can sit and wait to get a free space here in the frequency on the radio. There we go, that's us. So now it's important that you click on number one to read back to acknowledge the IFR clearance which you got before. There's a lot of people talking on top of each other here. Well, then we go to the ground frequency. There we go. So, the clearance we got was fly straight ahead, one way heading, climb 7,000 feet, and then departure frequency 134.5. We also got a squawk, ATC squawk, which is 6111. And uh, we were supposed to contact the ground on 1 to 1 is 8 when ready for taxi. Now, first of all, let's go up here and set the 
Seared Altitude. We do that here. There we go. 7,000 feet is set. And you can also see that down here. So 7,000 feet blue. And on the 80s before, we had uh, the QNH 2992 was equal to 1013. Uh, you can also change it to read HPA if you want to do that. I'm used to the QNHs. Good. Uh, then we also need to set the squawk code, which we got before. Let's put it down. Let's see if we can find it. Go down here. And you can see it actually already put that in fully automatically. 6 triple 1. Good. Now let's, for the front of it, enter on way 28 left for departure. One way, two way left. There we go. And we just take. Um, we we don't take any kind of departure. We got a one way heading before, so I will just say temporarily insert. And then it flies two eight left straight away to one thousand five hundred thirty feet. And then there is a discontinuity. So when we go come to fifteen hundred feet, we can put the. Uh, first away point up here. If we take a call the C O L L I put it up here as next waypoint. There we go. And then we should be able as well to see it here on our nice navigation screens. There we go. Go up here and it turns right to Collie. I'll just put the selector here into plan mode, then I get a much better idea of where I'm actually flying. And you can see Coley is, is out here, so it's up here 1500 feet and then to the right at some point when departure they uh, turn us. Good, um, let's finish the MCDU. From Coley, we're using Airway Victor 6. I click on Coley. I click on Airways, I click on Victor 6, up here, and uh, we actually follow Victor 6 all the way down to Sierra Whiskey Romeo, Sierra Whiskey Romeo, there we go, and insert, now you can see it actually automatically puts in all the waypoints on the route all the way to Sierra Whiskey Romeo and then we also fly to Head 3 after Sierra Whiskey Romeo and we can uh, just to show you how to do that I'll put Head 3 up on the next waypoint so that was actually the, the, the plan now we arrive at Reno I don't know what runway is in use over there um, I could go in and have a look at the Meta which will of course have been uh, been doing uh, in real life to see what kind of weather are we flying towards and then we also would have had an idea of which runway was in use over there but let's just go over there um, and uh, use ILS runway 16 uh, right we'll see what will come up on a later stage good then we go from the flight plan we need to make a secondary fly plan. Now that's if we get any kind of failures during our departure, then we have a secondary plan which we can follow. Now we could go ahead to fly straight ahead 1500 feet and then go continue over to Kali, but then we can stop at Kali and we can insert a holding pattern over there. And when we are read ready to leave the holding pattern we can actually go back to K uh, S F O can divert back here is new destination and we can plan with a landing on ILS 28 
left, no wires. So that's actually our secondary flight plan now. S just to show you here. Then we'll go straight ahead to the right, enter a holding pattern, and when we are ready, have dealt with our problem and the checklist, we can go back here and, in and land in San Francisco 28 left again. Good. The right now, uh, that's our helping or our radio navigation aids. We can just use the default, it's fine for, for, for this demonstration flight. We have San Francisco put up here and the ILS is pre-selected actually for one with 2 8 left here as well. Then we want to put in the weights and uh, the system should actually have done that. Let's see if the takeoff weight which is uh, set here. Oh, it says block fuel 6 tons. I actually think that we told the MCDU over here to load more than 6 ton. Let's go up and see. We actually have 8,400 kilos. Okay. So we put 8.4 in here. And the zero fuel mass 46.4. Let's go over here and have a look. There. The takeoff weight is actually 54. Point uh, two. Okay. So our fuel weight is actually the four. Sorry, fifty-four point two minus the eight point four, giving us forty-five point eight tons in fuel weight. So we'll go back here on the MCDU and we'll enter the uh, fuel weight up here. This was 45.8. There we go. And actually the CG, uh, I don't know actually if the simulator will take that into consideration. It says 26 here. I actually think that is for the uh, takeoff, but normally we'll put in the uh, fuel mass CG as well. We can try and do it, if, see if it'll accept it like this. Oh, it could accept it, so that's very good. Now we have the takeoff mass, 54 tons. Headwind, if we have headwind or tailwind, we could insert that here and also trip fuel to an eventual uh, alternate. And the alternate which we'll be using today is back to K S F O. There we go. So. The only thing we need to do now is actually to enter the performance and the system does that automatically. It takes config 2, trim 0.8 up, a small flex temperature, speeds 20, 29, 32, thrust reduction altitude 1513 feet and acceleration 1513 and engine out acceleration as well 1513. Let's just stick with that. We are actually now ready to um, do the uh, before start checklist and that actually means that we need to close all the doors in the aircraft. And we do that, as you remember, under the MCDU number 2. There we go. Return go to aircraft doors and we just go up here and click on the front left door and on the aft left front and aft cargo door as well and it's now getting closed let's just confirm that all the doors are closed before start checklist see that here now the before start checklist actually starts fully automatically windows and doors Closed and locked. APU. Set on. APU bleed. Yeah, now there'll be a little uh, pause in everything because we need to start up the APU before we can actually put on APU bleed. So let's go down and see the progress of the startup. There we go.
I don't know if you can see something outside from the back. We can try and zoom down here. Yeah, you can hear the APU starting up, okay. We need to get all the ground equipment outside away as well. Let's have a look. The APU should be up and running now. APU bleed. No, oh, not quite running yet. In the meanwhile, we can go over here and see if we can remove any ground services. World travel one five three zero. We can remove. Oh, the traffic cones. World travel one five three zero. Okay, the wheelchart will be removed as soon as we set on the parking brake. There we go. We can actually put on the parking brake now. Now the APU is available. Set on. External power. Disconnected and off. Cabin signs. On. Trust levers. Idle. Parking brake. On. Bearer reference. Checked. One zero one three. One zero one three. Check. Beacon lights. Set on. Checklist complete. Good. That was actually the full preparation and until we are now ready for pushback and I think I'll divide it up into several parts here so that'll be a part number one the uh, preparation of everything and uh, again the next uh, step we'll be doing is actually to uh, request for the push and start and we also want to uh, of course start up the engines and take it from there just to show you the uh, airport diagram of San Francisco uh, we are parked at uh, gate A1 that's in here in the corner and uh, on way 28 left and 28 right we have actually set it up for 28 left for the uh, departure and we'll see if we will be getting that I'm not sure yet they can change it as soon as we are asking for taxi uh, here is another map and here you can actually see gate A1 so, so it's a relatively long taxi from A1 all the way over here to the departure uh, runways so thank you very much for uh, uh, checking out this setup here um, I'll be back with part two very, very soon.